Good evening. My name is Christy Keeler, and I am a Purina sales specialist. I work with Farmers Cooperative in all of their locations across Western Arkansas and Eastern Oklahoma. We appreciate you taking the time this evening to join us on our cattle chat series. Just as a refresher, all of our lines are muted on Zoom. If you are joining us via the Zoom platform in the bottom left-hand corner, you will see join audio. This will allow you to call in if you would prefer versus using your computer audio. If you have any questions if using the Zoom app on your mobile device, or your iPad device. In the bottom right-hand corner, you will see three little round buttons that will say more. You click on those. It'll pop up a chat option there, and you can drop those questions in for Dr. N.T. Cosby this evening. If you're joining via your computer, there's a chat box icon in the bottom right, or the bottom middle section of your screen. Please feel to drop those in as well. And then if you are catching us on our Facebook live stream, please drop any questions in for Dr. N.T. Cosby there as we will continue to monitor that throughout tonight's session. So if you don't mind, drop in a little chat. Let us know where you're joining from. So I'm joining from Broken Arrow tonight. And um, Dr. N.T. is joining um, up out of Missouri. So with that, Dr. N.T. Cosby, we appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. And I'll let you take it over from there. Thank you, Christy. Thank you all for joining. Uh, if, you, uh, if we haven't uh, met in uh, live or virtually, um, I uh, am an Illinois native, uh, spent a little time in Florida and then Colorado State and uh, currently live in Mexico, Missouri. Uh, I've lived here for uh, 20 years working for, uh, for Purina, and this is about the longest place I've ever lived. So uh, that's uh, a little bit about me. And uh, this evening, we are going to talk about uh, uh, weaning calves. And the way I'm going to start that is uh, asking you, letting you think about uh, what, uh, what brings the most dollars for you when you sell your calves. And you say, I thought we were talking about weaning feeds. Well, uh, I think it's, it's first important that we talk about uh, a little bit of how we're gonna uh, pay for the time we're gonna keep the calves and think about uh, ways we can add value. So I've got some uh, a list here of, of things that affect how much our calves are worth. So for example, I think uh, the top three there, uh, steers that are castrated and healed up and dehorned, that's just, that's, that's table stakes. In other words, uh, that's just kind of the base that everything else is based off of. And then we start talking about, are the calves consistent? And do they have high quality? Are they a large draft? And you might say, well, what's a large draft or how many numbers? So if we look at that picture there, uh, there's, uh, there's four head, they average 801. And I'm willing to uh, venture to say that those four steers uh, will bring more uh, sold as a set of four than if they had been uh, run through their singlies. So uh, what's a large draft? Well, anything more than one. So two will bring of like kind and type will bring more than one, three will bring more than four, uh, one pot load will bring more than uh, a half a load. So that's uh, just a little description of what I mean by I say, when I say a large draft. Are the calves healthy? Are they weaned? Do they have the right condition? And then we can start talking about some of the added benefits, uh, possibilities such as uh, NHTC, which is non-hormone treated cattle, agent source. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. Now, when I present all this, um, I usually uh, ask a question and say, which of those things did you do on sale day? And I think we would all agree that uh, none of those happened on sale day. So sale day really is too late to quote unquote sell your calves. Uh, if, if we want to uh, capture uh, the value we have in our calves, I think uh, we need to start planning and thinking about ways we can add value to those calves and, uh, and capture more of that value. And if we wait until sale day and, and we're looking at the market report and, and decide today just feels like a good day, 
Uh, chances are we're not always going to be able to capture all the uh, value in our calves. So let's talk a little bit about uh, weaning those calves. And, and you might say, well, I don't know about weaning. Why, why would I want to wean? Uh, so I've got a list of reasons there. Number one, uh, most of us are going to keep back replacements out of our, uh, our own herd. Uh, they certainly need to be weaned and kept healthy. So if you do nothing else, uh, think about a good quality weaning program for your replacement heifers. Uh, maybe because of uh, a forage shortage or uh, our first calf heifer starting to get a little thin. For example, uh, that picture right there, uh, a young first calf heifer starting to lose a little body condition score and that calf sure big enough to be weaned. Uh, maybe we want to uh, think about early weaning. Or some other reasons might be uh, a way to optimize a marketing window or, or, or I guess uh, I would say uh, capture or, or follow the trends in, in marketing uh, and, and look at uh, what the seasonal trends are and optimize a marketing window and therefore target some economic opportunities. So let me show you some examples of those. We're sitting here on uh, the 15th day of, uh, of September and my prediction is uh, in the next three or four weeks that market is probably not going to be as good as it is today. How do I know that? Well, it just happens about every year. So I've got some market news reports here and I can go back 10 years, I've, I've kept these. And I always pull out the highlights in, in October uh, for this very reason. So for example, October 6th, 2017, long time wean preconditioned calves with the complete vaccination program saw sharply higher undertones. What about uh, 2018? Extensive pre-weaning and vaccination programs enacted by producers are sought after by buyers. What about last year? Okay, look at this one. Buyers in Missouri are now focusing on purchasing calves with at least a 45 day weaning period, as well as at least two rounds of shots. Many buyers can buy lots of cattle from various places and they feel like these shots help keep freshly weaned calves healthier than non-fall vaccinated, vaccinated animals. So we're going into the time of the year when very typically uh, it's the fall run. There's a lot of cattle out there, a lot of unweaned calves. We got a lot of weather stresses going on and buyers are going to be looking for those cattle that have been weaned, have been properly immunized and are ready for the, uh, for the, for the next phase and, and uh, subsequent reduction in uh, morbidity and health issues. So we know that's coming. So uh, there are some opportunities to add some value to our calves if, if we wean and, and precondition. So those are some reasons why we might wean, but I know you're gonna say, hey, look, um, yeah, that's all true, but what about the risk? I mean, what are my facilities? Are they good enough to, uh, to wean some calves? My goodness, if, if a couple calves get sick or heaven forbid I lose one, anything I might've gained on my other calves, well, I've just lost it. Uh, maybe you've heard uh, uh, neighbors say, I, I did that one year, I spent all that money on weaning and preconditioning and I hauled them to the barn and I didn't get any more than anybody else. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that. You might say, I just don't know if, uh, if I can get a return for, uh, for what I'm going to have to invest and I've got a lot of time and labor constraints elsewhere. So when I think about those things and, and addressing those risks, honestly, I go back to uh, this little chart here. And this is the four square philosophy of animal production. And this was uh, developed and, and put out there by the founder of Purina, William Danforth. And he said, for successful livestock production, you need, you need these four things. And if we're going to have a successful weaning program, I truly believe that we need all four of these corners of this square working for us. And this is really how we manage the risk associated with weaning and preconditioning. For example, uh, starting off at that upper right corner. Uh, if you've got good genetics, we'll talk about that. I, I think you've got an opportunity to capture some more value out of your calves. It does take some sound management. Uh, William Danforth, uh, at, the, at the time he developed his four square philosophy, uh, he called it proper sanitation. Today, we would call that a good health program. And then certainly uh, good feeding and nutrition go right along with that. So if we're going to manage the risk associated with weaning, I think we need to make sure we, we hit on every one of these four squares. 
So for example, let's start with genetics. Okay, you've invested in, in good quality genetics. So uh, obviously uh, that picture is not meant to be there. That's, that's the one I use when I talk to folks down in Louisiana. Uh, let, yeah, that one looks a little bit more like your calves, right? So you've invested in genetics. And uh, if you've uh, bought some good bulls, take, taken some pride in, in uh, your placement heifers, uh, my guess is you can get some very economical calf gains post weaning. We've talked about some seasonal marketing opportunities. What if we uh, maybe wean our calves now or, or, or in October, but we sell in uh, November or December past that tough weather time and uh, when calves are typically uh, strengthening in the market. Uh, rather than selling calves, what if we sold feeder cattle? Or some of you may uh, actually be preparing your calves to send uh, west to finish. And certainly uh, they're gonna do uh, better when they get to the feed yard if they are weaned and, and ready to go. So that's the genetic corner. The next thing is we need to think about is management and having the proper facilities. And, and I've got a picture there, but uh, rather than just talk about a picture, I'm going to, uh, at this point, bring up a video of uh, kind of a description of, of what uh, those uh, good quality, um, a, a weaning facility ought to look like. And to help me with that, I'm going to uh, bring up a video from Dr. Elizabeth Backus Blue. Uh, Y'all, uh, if you're on the uh, creep feeding program a few uh, weeks ago, you would have heard Dr. Backus. And so uh, she's going to talk about some weaning management tips. Hi everyone, Elizabeth Backus Blue here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about weaning management tips and some things that you can incorporate into your operation to help you be successful during the weaning phase. During this uh, session, I really like to refer back to Dan Force Four Square Philosophy to Animal Management. These four squares include genetics. Y'all have invested in the genetics for your operation, and we want to make sure that we cap captivate on those genetics during this time period. The other square is proper management. And that's what we're going to go through a few things uh, in this pin that I think you guys can incorporate into your operation uh, pretty easily. And I think it'll, it'll help your calves do better through the weaning phase. Uh, the first phase, or the first step we're going to talk about is water. Water drives intake. And it's uh, increasingly important during this phase, right? We want to get cattle on feed as quickly as we can because that's going to help them get over weaning stress and get them off to performing, which is what we want them to do. Uh, and so we need to make sure that we provide adequate water to these calves during the weaning program. You'll see here I have two different uh, water sources. I got a uh, an automatic water here and when we think about cattle out on pasture, we don't typically have them have access to automatic waters and so some calves might not be able to or might not know how to drink from an automatic water especially if it's one that has that ball in it that they have to push down uh, so I always like recommending putting two water sources in the pen just so that a it gives calves time to train over to an automatic water but then also provides additional water to those calves uh, only one or two calves can drink out of a water like this at a time uh, by having an extra water source in the pen really drives that water intake and will drive that feed intake as well okay the next thing that we're going to move to is our feed bunk okay um, whether you're using a, a self feeder or you're using a hand fed uh, situation the same thing still applies I know right now I have a traditional bunk uh, feeder but nonetheless this will also apply to your self feeder folks uh, but what's important about this feeder is the position of the feeder relative to the pin design uh, when cattle uh, come into a pin what's the first thing they do they start pacing around that feed bunk or that feed that pin I'm sorry and they're also bawling so not only are they pacing they're bawling and when are they most susceptible to respiratory disease during this time frame uh, think about how you feel after you go to your favorite football game or your favorite baseball game and you've been cheering like crazy your throat feels rough the next day right same thing happens with these calves so I would encourage you to put this feeder perpendicular to the fence row. Uh, by doing 
walk into it uh, they they get access to that feed uh, and just helps that transition phase as they um, are making their way across the weaning pen I know it's I know it's super nice to have this feeder run parallel to the fence row because all you have to do is just dump the feed right but I would challenge you guys to put this feeder perpendicular to really help those calves get on feed quicker the next thing is is access to hay okay uh, you know if you're using an option where you're feeding hay we want that hay to be free choice. Free choice hay means every calf has access to that hay uh, and can, can come up and consume it. You know, typically we're about 10 to 15 calves per hay ring. Uh, now, a couple things with this type of hay ring and what happens when calves consume hay. What do they do? They basically make a muffin top to it and that, uh, those calves can only reach so far in this pen. So if you get in those situations where um, you get that muffin top on that hay, take that hay and spread it out so each calf can consume it. Because remember, that's about the same distance from their nose to their shoulder. So spread that hay out and make sure that uh, each calf can consume it adequately. Also, if you got some lighter weight calves or you have to early wean, what have you, make sure that any of those young calves can still reach that hay. Because if we have this here, those calves can't necessarily uh, get to the center of this hay ring. Uh, so again, if you're using free choice hay, let's make sure it's free choice. Let's not limit performance and consumption just because we're limiting hay, okay? And the last thing that I'd like to talk with you guys about is uh, incorporating some sort of uh, wind and rain avail for tub or a stress tub, okay? Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that inside, but you know these stress tubs, put them in the back of the pen because as those timid calves uh, are trying to work themselves on feed, they're typically hanging out in the back of the pasture or in the back of the pen. So we wanna place these where those calves are gonna hang out uh, because as they lick them, like I say, they start producing saliva. That's going to help that transition phase over um, onto the feed out of the bunk or in the self feeder. So those are some quick things that you can incorporate into your operation as far as some management tools. Uh, so that's the second square. Again, the first square was genetics. The second square is management. Uh, the third is having a herd health program in place with your local veterinarian deciding what vaccines, dewormers are gonna use uh, to treat those calves with that weaning to get them off to a good start. Uh, and then lastly, the last square is nutrition. And when we go back All right, so Dr. Backus did a, a great job of describing uh, what, uh, what uh, a good quality, uh, Pro, uh, uh, weaning pen ought to look like. And so uh, we'll go back now to the slides and, and describe that and talk a little bit about that in detail. So um, if we're back to this uh, uh, picture and you can see that, and, and you see a lot of the things that she described. And uh, you know, the first thing we see is, is the water set up in that pen as she described. Um, she mentioned the hay. Uh, there's probably uh, for that group of calves based on her recommendations and I would agree we probably need another hay ring in there. Um, she described a muffin top and I had to ask her about that because when uh, she was talking about that I thought she meant what was hanging over my uh, pants whenever I cinched up my belt but uh, she was describing that situation there with the with the hay where uh, the calves can can only reach so far and so we need to make sure that there is free choice access and much like uh, the tubs in in uh, her uh, example there, the tub in this pen is also uh, empty. So we need to make sure we uh, keep one of those wind and rain available for stress tubs out there as well. So a uh, great uh, description of, of how to keep uh, our facilities ready to receive those calves and, uh, and get them off to a good start. Uh, of course, uh, from a health program, uh, we're always going to recommend uh, to work with your local health expert, your local veterinarian, uh, we know feed, your veterinarian knows health. So work with them on a, a respiratory program uh, as well as a parasite control and certainly ways to minimize stress. Okay, so 
now we'll start talking about some things of, of what can I expect for doing all this. Um, and the first thing I would say is, uh, as we look at this chart, and, and it is a little bit busy, but uh, there's three years on there, 2017, 2018, 2019, and it's the source of this information is scattle facts. And uh, to the far left, you'll see uh, the dollars received per head by year for calves that were just shipped right off the cow. So anywhere depending on the year from 800 to $834 a head. If they were weaned for less than 28 days, notice what happened. They actually got less per head. You might say, why in the world is, is that the case? Well, if we think about disease, uh, typically ranch fresh, home raised calves, uh, if they're, they are going to get sick, it's usually around day 10 to, uh, to 20 in that window. It just takes time for that disease to uh, reach a threshold in that calf where it overwhelms their immune system and they get sick. So for you guys that say, I'll wean them long enough to get the ball out, uh, probably not a good program because the buyers have realized that uh, if those calves haven't been weaned long enough, and uh, just long enough to get the ball out for a week or 10 days, chances are when they get them, put them under a little stress of transport, those calves are gonna break with sickness. And consequently, they aren't gonna pay as much for those calves. So uh, weaning for less than 28 days, probably not optimal to uh, help your return. 28 to 45 days, you can see that's basically uh, no better than shipped off the cow. Uh, and really what the buyers are, are wanting is a wean for over 45 days. And there you can see, uh, depending on the year, but uh, on average, close to $100 extra received. So we'll go through some math and, and talk about, uh, is that enough and, and uh, can that help help the return? So we're looking at $100, $100 per calf for weaning over 45 days. Uh, I wanna take a, a minute and talk about uh, why I think we need to start thinking about this for our calves, but also look to the future and what is coming in our industry, in my opinion. And so this is a, a slide taken by, uh, put together by Dr. Neville Spear and Neville works for uh, where food comes from. And what uh, that company is, is a third party verification system. In other words, they verify cattle such as yours and how you handle them and, uh, and, and audit uh, your practices. You may say, I don't want any part of that. And, and, and certainly that's voluntary and you may not. But uh, if we look at some of these premiums and where I believe this market is going, you can see that there are some sig significant premiums. For example, a natural affidavit, in other words, uh, just basically you sign in a piece of paper that says uh, they've not had any antibiotics or growth hormones, not a whole lot of premium there. SAV, which is source and age verified, again, source and age verified by a third party, so a, a company such as this, and you can see the premium there. NHTC, that's non-hormone treated cattle. In other words, you did not use an implant on those calves. Uh, about a, depending on heifers or steers from five to $7. VNB, verified natural beef. In other words, uh, no antibiotics. Uh, and you'll, you're willing to, uh, to verify that and they audit your program. You can see that there is a significant dollar uh, associated with that. And then the next is care. Uh, and that is where food comes from, beef care certified. That is an actual audit of not only your nutrition program, but also your grazing program and your animal husbandry practices. And you may say, I, I don't have any interest in that. I can't believe the industry is coming to that. And, and what I would submit to you is uh, there's an article uh, this, this uh, week, actually, that Tyson Foods signed a, uh, an agreement with uh, this where food comes from company to uh, source a significant portion of their volume on a yearly basis from uh, beef care certified producers. So um, first steps first, uh, think about weaning and uh, preconditioning your calves uh, with an eye to the future. And I'm just letting you know what, uh, what is coming uh, from an industry standpoint and ways that uh, if, uh, if we get on board, we can capture more value for our calves. Say all that to say this, the day of, uh, of us hauling our calves to the uh, sale barn, standing at the ring and saying they've had all their shots, uh, probably doesn't carry as much weight as it used to. So we need to uh, step up our game with our good quality genetics and uh, ways that we can capture more of that value.
if you're interested, uh, we can help with that. Uh, Purina and our dealers uh, have a third party verification program uh, in which uh, requires a little uh, uh, record keeping on your part uh, using some Purina starter feeds, but we will help you uh, verify that those calves are what, uh, uh, what you intend them to be and what the buyers are looking for and help you capture some of those premiums. So if you have some uh, interest in that, uh, be sure to contact uh, Christy or uh, stop into your local co-op branch and store and, and talk to the managers there about uh, the Purina Plus program. All right, we've talked a lot about uh, premiums and, and I hear it. I hear people say, I've done all that. I don't get any premiums. Well, let me show you where, uh, where the real premiums are when it comes to marketing your calves. And that is oftentimes when we pull our calves and, and take them to the sale barn, we don't think about how much they actually shrink. And so OSU, so that's Oklahoma State University and TAMU, so Texas A&M University, got two different uh, demonstrations here. And what they looked at was calves that were weaned the day of sale. In other words, pulled off the cow that morning, hauled to the sale barn and sold. And uh, you can see there, they shrunk from 3.4 to 5.3%, depending on the, uh, the uh, experiment. If they were weaned before the, the sale, about 5%, so pretty similar to that Texas A&M study. And then if those calves were weak, weaned and preconditioned for at least three weeks, uh, they saw a significant reduction in shrink. In other words, those calves aren't walking and bawling like uh, Dr. Bacchus Blue talked about, and they shrink less. So about a half to a, two th or a, a third to a half as much. So what does that mean to you economically? Let's look at that. And I'll, I would submit to you, this is where your real premiums are. Whether you get a premium for VAC 45 or not, Here's a premium. So on my on the left there, I have calves that are weaned and just sold. So maybe you wean 550 pound steers. You don't put anything into them in terms of starter cost or hay. Uh, they don't gain anything, obviously. You strip them and ship them, uh, take them to the barn. Uh, your weight at the farm was 550. When you loaded them on the uh, gooseneck, they shrink four and a half, which is in between that OSU and Texas A&M study. So four and a half percent. So you will be paid on, they say a weight of 525 pounds. I put them in at a buck 60, so your gross returns are $840. What if, however, you took those same 550 pound calves and you put $35 a feed into them? So that's roughly, uh, uh, when I did the math, about $28 of, of a starter, 100 pounds of starter, and then uh, 200 pounds of hay. And, and I put that hay in there at, uh, I believe, uh, $80 a ton. So I came up with a $35 feed cost. Uh, in that roughly three week period, I would expect those calves to gain about two and a half pounds a day, so 50 pounds. So now I'm gonna ship those calves at, at uh, 600 pounds. My shrink is gonna be less. Again, just following the data from those two uh, universities. So I, I put the shrink in at 3%. So now my sale weight is 582. I slid those calves a nickel, they're heavier. Okay, so 582. So I slid them back a nickel. So my gross returns are 902. So I've got $64 additional gross, but I got to subtract out the feed bill, remember? So the preconditioning advantage after feed expenses due to weight gain and due to less shrink is $27 a head or over a dollar per head per day. Now, somebody might say, hey, I preconditioned those calves and look, they brought a nickel less than those guys at this stripped and shipped them. And you can laugh all the way to the bank, okay? Because uh, you did make $27 a head by doing that based on economical weight gains and less shrink at the barn. So there is, uh, if you get nothing else out of this, the premium is in how you handle those calves and reducing the shrink when you sell them at the barn. So the, we've kind of gone through this and I uh, hear Dr. Bacchus Blue mentioned as well, she had a good trainer. Um, good breeding, sound management, proper sanitation or health. And uh, my goodness, uh, I work for Trina. We probably ought to talk a little bit about weaning feed. So, and nutrition is, is the fourth square. And our goal with the nutrition program at weaning is to get those calves eating quickly, uh, keep them healthy. Uh, and that's not enough. The calves need to gain. Based on uh, a previous economic example I showed you, the calves do need to gain so that uh, you can uh, recoup more dollars. Otherwise, why in the heck would you do it? 
Uh, certainly we need to keep the calves in the right condition, have a program for you for however long you wanna keep those calves and have them targeted and ready on the day you wanna market them. And again, sale day is too late to sell your calves. So uh, a planning process and putting that together and we're certainly glad to work with you in, in doing that. First thing we uh, wanna do, back of the pen, just like Dr. Backus Blue mentioned, put one of these uh, Purina wind and rain tubs in, uh, one for every 25 to 30 head. I want to scone and scone. That's probably gonna last you about three weeks. Why do we do this? Number one, these tubs provide a, a very bioavailable source of trace minerals, the available product from Zenpro. The other thing is, and you can see that calf licking his nose there on the right, when they lick that tub, um, they lick and they produce saliva and that saliva buffers that rumen. And uh, when we do that, we get calves go into the hay rack, chewing, uh, eating some hay and chewing their cud. And, and I would submit to you that uh, nobody's ever doctored a calf that was chewing his cud. So I get one of these uh, uh, wind and rain available for stress tubs out there. Again, one every 25, 30 head uh, at the start. So that's step one. Next thing we're gonna do is, is recommend a feeding program. And, and we have three. Uh, the gold standard, the one everything else is compared to is uh, pre-con complete. So that's that large pellet that was introduced in 1968. It's still successful because calves eat it. Um, this is the one that uh, virtually any Purina dealer will keep on hand this time of year. So uh, if, uh, if uh, your daughter comes home from college and you decide it's a nice cool day and you want to wean some calves, uh, chances are you'll be able to find pre-con at the, at the co-op store and can get them going on it. We recommend uh, 200 pounds per calf to budget. So 10 pounds a day for roughly 20 days. That uh, again is the gold standard, excellent product. The next uh, product I'll talk about is called Accuration Starter Complete. So if you want to uh, put a feed in a bulk feeder, this would be the one that we would recommend. So it contains Purina's IM, which stands for Intake Modifying Technology. In other words, those calves uh, are able to consume that feed several times throughout the day uh, without uh, digestive upset through that cell feeder. Um, consequently, we can put more energy in it than we do in our pre-con product. Uh, you will get better gains and uh, much better feed conversion putting this product through a uh, cell feeder. Now, great product. We sell a lot of it. Uh, I will tell you that uh, if this is something that is interest, of interest to you, uh, we'll need a little planning time to get this uh, to you in bulk. So if that's of interest, uh, again, talk to your uh, uh, store manager at, uh, at Farmers Co-op so they can uh, kind of put together the plan to get it to you. Uh, we recommend 300 pounds per calf. Again, that's going to uh, give you about three weeks to, uh, of the starter period. And then the last uh, product I'll mention on the nutrition side is called Stress Care 5. And this one is the one that I think just has a world application in, uh, in our part of the world and, and uh, raising your cattle because uh, you all raise uh, good quality hay um, and Stress Care 5 is meant to utilize uh, your hay very effectively. Uh, if you've got a lot of hay, uh, this would be the product I would recommend. So we want to, uh, again, like uh, the video talked about, one hay ring for every 10 to 15 head, and then we feed five pounds of Stress Care 5 for uh, roughly three weeks. So budget 100 pounds per calf or two, two bags per calf. Uh, anybody that has ever utilized this program says, my goodness, the calves eat the hay. Uh, it really does increase uh, forage intake. We get the exceptional gains. They digest that hay well, and it utilizes your forage. So uh, Stress Care 5 really is a supplement to your good quality forage. Now you might say, well, I get along just pretty doggone well, just feed them something like soil. Why in the world would I feed, uh, you know, a, a feed that's going to cost me a little bit more. So here's a comparison from our research farm at uh, Gray Summit, Missouri, comparing five pounds of soy holes to five pounds of the Stress Care 5. So you can see the top line there, initial weight, very similar. Final weight, uh, we got two times the gain on Stress Care 5. You say, well, how in the world did you do that? You, both, you fed them both five pounds. Look at the hay intake. Uh, significant increase in hay intake. And not only that, but to get that kind of additional gain, not only did they eat more hay, but they did a better job of digesting it. The Stress Care 5 contains some uh, yeast components that uh, improve rumen fermentation and improve the ability of those rumen microbes to, uh, to digest your forage. So 
we will get more value out of your hay now with Stress Care 5 than, uh, than using uh, uh, straight soy holes or a commodity mix. You say, well, I know what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, that's it's your Purina Research Farm. Is that true in the real world? Uh, I did a comparison a number of years ago in uh, Laurel, Mississippi. So uh, this is a split demonstration. So we compared five, Stress Care 5 to a, a four-way commodity blend. So gluten distillers, soy holes, and corn was uh, the four-way commodity in, in equal parts. And uh, start weight, you can see there, a little, little bit difference. They were just gate cut, equal number of steers and heifers, but a little difference in weight, but not, the, not a huge difference. Now, I fed them five pounds of each. Average daily gain, very, very similar to what we saw with, uh, with, with the Gray Summit. Uh, Purina research. So quite a bit more gain. And uh, trust me that uh, that paid. Those cattle actually went from Laurel, Mississippi to and were sold at uh, Oklahoma City. And uh, the, the dollars return for the calves fed stress care five was significant because again of that performance advantage. All of our Purina starter feeds contain uh, what we call RX3. Uh, this is our newest addition to the Purina lineup of starter feeds. Uh, starting back in 2015, we saw the handwriting on the wall and, and saw that uh, you know, the, the VFD age was coming. In other words, uh, the veterinary feed directive. So if you're not familiar with that, in order to feed a uh, preventative antibiotic in our starter feed, uh, we need to have our veterinarian uh, write us a VFD in order to do that. Uh, we saw that writing on the wall and we thought, what other ways could we keep cattle healthy without using antibiotics? And so starting in 2015, we uh, began working on uh, the RX3 program and, and what came of that. So what RX3 is, is a proprietary blend of prebiotics, probiotics, and plant extracts that support the calf's immune system to keep them healthy during the weaning period. So what does the RX3 stand for? Well, the three R's are recognize, respond, and recover. So the RX3 component, which again is in all Purina starter feeds, it, allow, it uh, influences the innate immune system. So the calf's system and immune system that he was born with so that they recognize disease sooner. So it prime, what I say is it primes that calf's immune system so that when he uh, is undergoes a disease challenge and if uh, uh, that calf's immune system recognizes, hey, uh, there's some foreign invaders in my system, I need to start fighting that off. And so they start fighting that disease challenge off sooner. Uh, when calves' immune system is activated like that, guess what? They look sick. Just like when, uh, when I start getting uh, a cold or the flu or something like that, my wife knows, she can tell by looking at me that, hey, you're not right, you're starting to get sick. Well, you all have raised cattle for a number of years, you can look at your calves and say, hey, that calf, he's an NDR, not doing right. I need to do something about that because you recognize the signs of that calf getting sick. What if you could recognize that those calves were getting sick two days sooner? Because you're able to do that and you get an antibiotic treatment into those calves, they will respond, which is the second point, more appro appropriately. In other words, they'll start fighting that disease with their immune system, plus the antibiotic that you use them on a therapeutic level dose, and consequently, they will recover more quickly. So those are the three R's. So you need no VFD to utilize the RX3 product. Um, no veterinarian needs to write uh, a VFD for you because these are all natural ingredients that, uh, again, prime that calf's immune system so they are ready to fight disease. Uh, just a quick slide on, on what you can expect from RX3. Basically what we saw, number two, reduction in percent morbidity. What is that? Morbidity is just uh, that college word for uh, sickness. So a reduction in the percent sickness in both the high risk kind of category or the low risk, which would be your ranch raised calves, about half. We saw about the half. So again, uh, remember that the Purina guy at this, uh, on this presentation did not say, if you feed this, your calves won't get sick. Um, there is still that risk. But again, think about what we're trying to do to, to prevent that with our four square philosophy. But uh, the RX3 does uh, reduce um, that risk of, of calves getting sick. Um, 
they show those signs of, of disease challenge quicker so you can get them taken care of with uh, therapeutic antibiotics. And uh, because they respond and recover quickly, we do see an improved weight gain and uh, feed conversion in, in calves fed RX3 versus not. So great addition to our starter lineup. Um, had tremendous success with it uh, last year. This was first sold in 2019 um, and uh, dramatically uh, changed the way uh, we, we recommend our, our starter feeds and, and the additives we use. So uh, great addition to our program. So I'm gonna wrap up and, uh, and kind of start back where, uh, or, or circle around to where we started and say, why wean and precondition? Hopefully I've given you some good ideas and, and reasons why you might wean and precondition calves. But at the end of the day, uh, we, we spend a lot of time and investment in our calves. And, and uh, frankly, when, when we uh, set them up for success for the next owner, uh, it's good for our calves. To, uh, to wean and precondition. Uh, it's also good for our industry. I've tried to give you a little uh, hint of what, at least in my opinion, are things coming down the road at us, uh, whether we agree or disagree and whether we choose to participate or not. Uh, to be aware of and those things, uh, weaning and preconditioning regardless uh, is, is good for our industry. And hopefully I've given you some ideas to suggest that uh, it's also a good investment that uh, the dollars you invest in a 45 day or longer preconditioning program is, is a good investment and can provide a, a, a return to your cattle operation. And, and the last good I'd say is uh, having good partners. Okay. And so uh, we are, uh, we at Purina are proud to uh, partner with Farmers Cooperative at, uh, and the branches associated with them. And we certainly thank you for attending and uh, thank you for your interest and, and hope that uh, you will go in to your uh, local farmers co-op branch and, and ask them about uh, weaning and preconditioning programs that uh, suit you and uh, with your Purina program. So thank you. I'm going to uh, exit out of the slides and uh, turn this back over to uh, Christy to uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to answer some questions. Perfect. So, Dr. N.T., we did have some questions that were dropped in. And a couple of those questions is when, when you're thinking about good quality hay for weaning time, what type of parameters or values would you be looking at? Okay, when I say uh, good quality hay, um, typically anything over, uh, ideally over 10% uh, protein, uh, certainly uh, with uh, Bermuda grass, uh, that's not usually an issue. Uh, I get some in Missouri that's a lot of fescue forages that are eight and nine, and guess what, we use it uh, because that's what we've got. Um, and as main thing is, is it palatable? Is it uh, free of mold? I can tell you that uh, the better quality of the forage, the better quality of the gains you're gonna get. Uh, we have a lot of people use the Stress Care 5 with stockpiled forage. Uh, those are the places where we get the best gains in performance. Um, and some of that uh, seven, eight percent protein fescue hay is probably the poorest performance. So it really is dependent on on the forage, but uh, ideally above ten. But we try to use what you've got. Okay. So then the other question is, is when you're trying to make up that selection on a weaning feed program for the calf crop, is there a particular one that you kind of focus the most on that's going to be, bring the best return back to that? Yeah, when I uh, start thinking about that, I, I you know, first question I ask is, uh, uh, do you want to you want to hand feed your calves, or or because of time labor constraints, uh, do you need to to wean those calves on a bulk feeder? And uh, depending on how that answer is, you know, obviously uh, if they say, you know what, uh, I just give you an example. Um, I'm in North Missouri. Uh, another few weeks, guys are going to start weaning the calves, and the other thing they're going to start doing is shelling corn. And so uh, they're going to want to uh, come out in the morning, walk through their calves, make sure their uh, everything is uh, upright and taking on nutrition and apparently healthy. And then they're going to go shell corn. And so they, they're a lot of folks up here use the, uh, the self feeder for that reason. Uh, so maybe that's your situation. Uh, other people say, hey, uh, nope, I like to uh, feed cattle in the bunk. I want to see them come to the bunk. I want to see them eat. And if they don't, that tells me they're sick. And so 
if, uh, if they say that, well, then we've got either the stress care five or the precon. If, uh, if again, average or better hay, I would suggest the, uh, the stress care five, maybe some hay that isn't quite so good or maybe not quite enough of it, uh, then we would probably go with the precon product there uh, to replace some of that hay. So bottom line is, uh, depending on what your goals are and, and your resources, uh, we've got a program that can work for you. Perfect. So we had a question that comes in from our Facebook stream this evening. Does verified natural beef mean no vaccinated cattle? It does not mean no vaccinated, not vaccinated. It means uh, natural, meaning uh, that they have not uh, had uh, access to a antibiotic. So they haven't been fed antibiotics. They haven't been injected with an antibiotic. They are uh, quote unquote uh, natural is what that would refer to. And so uh, in a verified program like that, a third party company would come in, basically uh, uh, look at your records, make sure. And, and in some cases, uh, here's where it gets catches a lot of us in our part of the world is we put out a, a mineral to prevent anaplasmosis and that has a CTC in it. So uh, that may kick some calves out of that program because they had access to that mineral while they were on the cow. So uh, yeah, it kind of depends on, uh, on the program, but uh, that's uh, one area where I could see uh, we would have problems in our part of the world with uh, preventing anaplasmosis and then calves that could be verified natural. But those are the things that the third party is going to uh, audit and, and check on. Perfect. So the other question that has come in is, what, is there benefit to fence line weaning versus other methods? I think there's absolutely a uh, benefit to fence line weaning. So if you're not familiar with that, it means uh, the cows and calves are, are, are the calves are pulled off the cows and, and they're separated by a uh, fence so they have nose to nose contact but the calves can't uh, obviously get through the fence or, or reach through and and, uh, and nurse and so it the main thing it does is it reduces the stress on uh, on both the cow and the calf and so uh, it eases that separation anxiety of the calf uh, and and pretty soon uh, you know if the, the cow is starting to drift farther and farther away and uh, and uh, before the calf knows it uh, you know mama's gone and so I think there's absolute benefits to uh, defense line weaning. The best case scenario, if uh, you can manage it, is actually leave the calves in, uh, in a small portion of that pasture and pull, move the calves. Uh, and, and there, there's a lot less uh, change to the calves. So that works very, very well. Perfect. Do you see any added uh, performance parameter difference from doing a, a traditional weaning versus a fence line? Uh, Christy, I am uh, I'm not... I guess uh, well versed enough to to say or familiar with that data to say what that advantage is, but anytime we can reduce the stress on a calf, it shows up and improve performance. So I would certainly expect there to be an advantage to uh, to doing so. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to take over here, and we're going to kind of walk through real quick. For you folks that are joining us, we've got another one as I'm. Um, pulling up in this presentation, Dr. Cosby, is um, what is the perfect age to wean calves? Well, the perfect age, I guess, uh, here a few years ago when it didn't rain and uh, we were, had no forage, uh, about 90 days of age was about the perfect age to wean at that point. Uh, this year uh, with, uh, with good quality grass, maybe it's a more traditional weaning time, which is gonna be in somewhere in that six to seven months of age, weaning the calves at, uh, at that point. And honestly, I think a lot of that also depends on uh, when those calves are born. So if they were say uh, born February, March, now is a good time to start thinking about weaning those calves because uh, the main thing is it gives that cow a chance before the weather turns rough on us to uh, pick up some body condition score going in, in the winter. The day we pull that calf off, her requirements are gonna drop 30%. If you've got some fall grass and 
you know, weather that isn't too tough right now, she's going to gain easily gain pound, pound and a half a day and be in great shape going into the winter, which is going to help your uh, uh, supplementation cost on your cows. So a uh, long answer to your question, but uh, um, it, uh, there is no, I guess in my mind, perfect age or it really depends on the situation. Okay. And another one that dropped in from Freddie here on our Zoom chat this evening is that he has been using a bulk feed from the co-op for his weaning calves and has seen that they have not been really as productive from a performance standpoint until they're about a year, a little over a year of age. Um, what type, of, should I use another feed during the weaning stage to potentially act your action? Right, yeah, those are, uh, you know, and, and towards the end of our uh, series, uh, we're, we're gonna talk about bulk feeds and um, there's certainly great ingredients and the co-op does a, a fantastic job blending those and putting together uh, programs. Um, and, and after that weaning period, so we talked about a VAC 45 program and, and thinking about it, I was remiss in the fact that I talked about weaning for about three weeks and I didn't tell you what to do the next uh, 30. Uh, the next 30 days, uh, that bulk feed from the co-op would be an excellent opportunity to use. However, that three week period during weaning, um, that calf's under a lot of stress, a lot of uh, things going on. And I would highly encourage you to use a, uh, a weaning feed during that time period. I think you will see your calves be more productive, not only then, but uh, they'll do better on that bulk feed from the co-op after that as well. Because uh, one thing we've learned and one thing Karina said for forever, and the reason they say it forever is because it's true, and that is cattle never get over a good start or a bad one. So uh, get them off to a good start with uh, by investing a few extra dollars in that three week period of weaning, and they'll perform much better for you later on. Perfect. So another one coming in is thoughts on weaning based upon the signs, NP. I know that's some thoughts that uh, I remember grew up to me being raised in a cow calf operation that my dad always did. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that I used to think were uh, uh, a lot of feed additives and things I didn't have a, a lot of trust in, and, and I was proven wrong. So, uh, you know what? I think. Uh, the, the best thing you can do from weaning on the sign is if, uh, is if you believe it and if uh, it makes you feel sleep better at night and take care of those calves, wean on the sign. Um, I sure can't uh, discount that at all. Perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna walk through real quick, folks. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to join us this evening and um, want to give you an opportunity to receive a $10 off coupon that you can take in to the local farmer's cooperative location to use for your next uh, Purina feed purchase. If you text Purina, P-U-R-I-N-A, to 95323, there will be a link that will come back on your text message. We would select Arkansas, and then tonight we will be using the Farmers Cooperative Greenwood link. This will then send you, you'll get to fill out a little bit of information, you've got to provide me a name and an email address. And then they will email you automatically a coupon that you can get printed off and take in to the co-op. Um, that will be accessible for the next two days. So, um, Kind of giving you a little view here of what that email will look like and what that coupon will look like. So what a great way to help you guys as we're getting into this weaning time. And with that, um, I've listed out here all the 15 locations, the retail locations across Western Arkansas and Eastern Oklahoma. If you guys have not fed any of our Purina feed in the past and would like to kind of look at getting started on some uh, weaning program or anything of that nature, please feel free to ask any of the locations about our feed greatness challenge that we do offer. So in Dr. NT, I, he'll be back on our platform on September the 29th at seven o'clock. And we'll be talking about the total brood cow nutrition program. So talking about the importance of why we hate cats 
And how do we walk through to make sure that we're gonna carry that cow into the best body conditions for as our winter is going to be approaching us sooner than later. And then we'll have Dr. Ted carry on on October the 13th as, um, to talk about supplementing and um, going into the winter. And then on October the 27th, we'll have Dr. John the clerk on to talk about mineral programs. You guys have any interest in regards to equine? Um, Ty Cunningham will be back onto our program in October as well. And then if you guys would like to learn about feeding some deer, um, Scott Hauntsey will be on on Thursday. So you guys check out the Farmers Co-op website. There is a um, section there that lists out all of these platforms that we've got going on and um, Dr. N.T. Cosby was very helpful as we were setting this up as COVID restrictions has, you know, hindered us a little bit. And we wanted to stay engaged and keep these in a 30, 45 minute chat format for you guys. So if you got any questions even afterwards, what I'd like to let you guys know is uh, my phone number is listed on here. Um, I am the sales specialist that works with Farmers Co-op and that number is 830 three three zero zero nine zero two and my email contact is on here as well and that's c keeler at landolake.com don't ever hesitate to reach out to myself um the folks there at the co-op that all the locations know how to get a hold of me and if i can't answer your question dr nt cosby is always um, there to help as well so we would like to um, thank you guys for joining us tonight. And I want to back up a couple of slides here to remind you guys that if you text Karina to 95323, you can get an opportunity for a link to get you a $10 off coupon. So folks, we appreciate everything. If you've got any final questions, we're going to hang on for about 30 more seconds uh, as we are streaming this on the Facebook Live. And we've got a little bit of delay. Those of you that have joined us on our Zoom platform, you'll get your name entered in for uh, one of two $25 uh, co-op gift cards that we'll be giving away tonight. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys on our next meeting. So, NT, I'm going to hang out for about 30 more seconds if you're good with that. I don't see Absolutely. anything at this point right now. But if you guys have any final questions, please drop those in and we'll get everything answered for you and even if you've got questions tomorrow or you know a few days from now don't ever hesitate one thing that i will also let you guys know is this uh will be on the facebook page and also it'll be on the farmers co-op youtube um, channel as well so if you've missed some of our other programs don't hesitate to uh, step on the facebook page or go to the youtube channel and you'll see all the other presentations as we schedule these starting back in july in different uh, formats. So with that, um, NT, I don't see anything else on here tonight. So um, from a question standpoint, but we look forward to seeing you here in a couple of weeks. Thank you. All, all right, thanks guys. Have a wonderful evening.